Good morning. It is the ninth Sunday of Pentecost. And today we welcome the prisoners from Trinity Church in Simcoe who are watching while their rector is on a well-deserved holiday. We welcome folk from Texas, from Europe, from Australia. It is an extraordinary thing that in the midst of all of the hardship of pandemic, it has brought Christians together from around the world in ways which we would never have imagined. And so from our far flung spots, we gather to worship God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. Our eyes look to you for you give us food in every season. The Lord is near to all who call on him in truth. You open your hand, O God, and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord fulfills the desire of all who fear him and watches over all who love him. So our mouths will speak the praise of the Lord and God's holy name forever and ever. Let us pray. Mysterious and merciful God, we praise you for the many ways you come to us and offer us abundant life. When the sun rises and the earth blooms around us, we are filled with grateful thanksgiving for your gift of a new day. When evening falls and we find ourselves in deserted, lonely places, we count on you to provide for our needs. For the times you show us the way when we are in need of guidance, we praise you for the times you provide healing when we are broken and hurting, we rejoice. Your grace makes the poor rich, the hungry satisfied and the weak strong. And so we worship you as a source of life and love, comfort and courage. Amen. Gracious and merciful God, as we gather to worship, we are aware that we have fallen short of the life you desire for us. And so we confess together, through Christ, you have shown us the way of compassion, generosity, and forgiveness, yet too often we neglect the suffering of others. Too often we blame and judge in the very moments you call us to act with kindness and mercy. Too often we cling to what we own rather than share our blessings with others. Free us from our greed and from our grievances. Open our hearts so that we may embody the teachings of your Son, our Savior. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. We say together the song of good news. Go up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of joy. Lift up your voice in strength, Jerusalem, herald of joy. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord comes in might, comes to rule with his mighty arm. Behold, his reward is with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd will he feed his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those with young. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now the collect for the night Sunday after Pentecost. God of compassion, your heart goes out to the hungry and destitute. You take what we have and transform it into much. Give us the bread that satisfied, the food 
without price so that our lives may show forth your overflowing love through Jesus Christ, the breaker of the bread. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return empty to me, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading from Isaiah this morning, the account of Isaiah talking about God's redemption of God's people from Babylon and their exodus from oppression in Babylon. It's one of the great stories in, in, in the Old Testament. And it's one which I speak, I think spoke not only to the people of Israel in Babylon, I think it speaks to us today loudly and clearly. But, but for us to, to really grasp it, I think we have to go back in time. See, in terms of defining stories for the people of Israel, this story, I would say is 1A in terms of stories that define them. Uh, the, the story number one, which defines them, is the story of the exodus of the people from Egypt. And the two are linked integrally and in that there are echoes of the exodus from Egypt that we hear across the, the centuries in our reading this morning. Let, let's go back to when the people of Israel were, were prisoners and living in captivity in Egypt. They were living in servitude under the empire of Pharaoh. 
And God came to set them free and, and, and with Moses began to lead them to the promised land. Now, listen, listen to the description of the promised land and think about the reading from Isaiah that you just heard. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in the valleys, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, a land where you will lack nothing. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. It sounds it sounds magnificent, it sounds incredible. But for the people of Israel, empire was seductive. For the people of Israel, there was a security in what they knew. And so time and again, when things got rough on their journey to the promised land, they said to Moses and to God, why did you bring us out into the wilderness to die? Why did you do, let us go back to Egypt, go back to the empire. And, and time and again, Moses had to convince them of God's presence, of God's faithfulness. And ultimately there was the covenant in Sinai which promised that God would be faithful to them and present to them forever. And, and remember the words, the words just before they entered the promised land, when, when Moses said this to the people, I'm setting before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I'm commanding you by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, observing his commandments, then you shall live and become numerous. But if your heart turns away, you do not hear, are led astray, bow down to other gods, I declare to you today that you shall perish. Moses gave him a choice. Life or death? And said, choose life. For your sake and for the sake of the world, choose life. Okay, we come to our reading this morning. The people are in Babylon. They've been in Babylon for a long time and for, for 15 chapters of, of Isaiah. Isaiah has been trying to convince them that it's time to come home. And then finally today, he's laying it all on the line and he gives them a picture of what it will be like going home. What he's doing is he's holding up uh, in contrast, homecoming and life in oppression in Babylon to try to met, make them take a choice. Rule, living under, under Yahweh's law, homecoming is about freedom. Staying in Babylon, it, it, it's about oppression. Going home is about justice and peace and abundance. Staying in Babylon is about coercion, stolen dignity, and loss of identity. Going home is, it is about new possibilities for a wonder-filled life. Staying in Babylon is a dead end. Isaiah is saying to the people, life and death choose life. Ah, uh, but empire is, is seductive. There, there's security in, in what they knew. And for many of them, they saw the words of Isaiah as being unbelievable and not possible. And so he set out in the reading today to convince them, to convince them of God's faithfulness. He talks about extending to them the covenant that he made with David, the greatest of all kings, that he was going to extend to them every blessing he would be with them to make sure that this was gonna work. It was gonna work. 
they needed to trust. And then we hear that part which Anglicans have come to see as a call to worship. It is not a call to worship, believe me. He said, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. He's not talking about sex, drug, and rock and roll. He's talking there about the people who have become so accommodated to Babylon that they will not hear and respond to God's call. And at this point, to use a phrase that my dear friends in Texas would use, God is saying through the lips of Isaiah, y'all need to come home now, dang it. Y'all need to just come home. And, and, and then he paints a glorious image of them, of what that exodus is gonna look like. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. This is going to be a moment which is transformation, not just for them, not just for the people of Israel, but for the whole world. Y'all just come home. It's time. It's your time. Okay, quickly, we move on to the New Testament. And, and for Jesus, Jesus came into a place where his people were living under oppression, under the empire of Caesar. He came to proclaim the kingdom of God. He came to say to them, it is time to come home out of exile. It is time to come home. But empire is seductive. And for the religious and political leaders, they had so accommodated to life under Caesar. They were so concerned about power and prestige and money that they would not hear the message. And, and so Jesus was hung on a cross. But after the resurrection, we hear the words. He said, go out into all the world. Baptize people everywhere in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go out into all the world. Draw people into my kingdom movement. And then, like Moses, like Isaiah, he assured them of God's presence and said, and you know, I'm with you always to the end of time. Three stories about three exoduses from oppression. I gotta tell you, I think they speak to us today because our world, we're living under empire. We are living under empires of oppression around the globe. We are living under domination systems that have created poverty on a global scale. Where millions of children tonight will go to bed hungry where the earth is being treated so shamelessly that hundreds of thousands of children every day with every breath they take are breathing in toxic air. We are living in a world where the system, where the empire drives systemic racism and racial hatred and religious intolerance because it is good for the system. Somehow hatred seems to make empire work. And I believe the message, I believe the message from Isaiah for us today, if we listen, is it is time for a fourth exodus. I believe Isaiah is calling us home and saying to us, imagine, imagine what it would be like if we were to reclaim our identity as human beings. Imagine what it would be like if we began to live in love and peace and harmony with one another. Imagine what it would be like if we reclaimed our identity as people of faith, Christian, Muslim, Jew. We're all people for whom justice and peace and care for the poor is at the center of who we are. What would it be if we reclaimed our identity as people of faith and put aside religious intolerance and hatred? What would our world look like? What would it look like if we reclaimed our baptismal identity? We, we live in a time when, when people are turning away from the church, turning their back on the church because they see the church 
as being hypocritical. They see the church as being irrelevant. What would it look like if we reclaimed our baptismal identity and lived love, lived mercy, lived forgiveness, didn't just talk about Jesus in the gospel, but lived the gospel in a way that gave hope to the poor and to the marginalized, to the broken, to the lonely, to the despairing, and to the grieving. What would it look like if we responded to the call to reclaim our purpose to be what God has called us to be? I, I, I believe, I believe that Isaiah is saying to us today, y'all need to come home, dang it. It's time, it, it's your moment. I'm offering you life or death. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for your goodness in all the times of our lives. Even in the uncertainties of this present moment, we are grateful for the strength and courage we find knowing you are right beside us. Give us the wisdom and patience we need to face a future filled with many questions and challenges. 
aware of our own needs today, we are reminded by Christ's compassion that so many others nearby and much further away experience even greater struggles. And so we lift up our prayers for the world, seeking your guidance so that we may do our part to bring comfort, healing, and hope. We pray for all who are sick or in pain, that they may have the medical assistance they need and the gift of healing in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who are grieving, that they may know the comfort of your presence and find hope in your promises. Especially, we remember those whose lives have been changed by COVID-19 and ask that you will support their recovery and heal relationships affected by this disease. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are hungry or homeless, and all those experiencing the stress of poverty and economic uncertainty. Give those with more resources the confidence to share generously. We pray for leaders in our communities and in our nation as they seek ways to recover well-being in the face of the global pandemic. Give them wisdom and courage to make decisions for the well-being of the most vulnerable. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who seek to show hospitality to others in their homes, in their workplaces, in the church, and the community, that their generosity will inspire others to open their hearts so that your goodness at work in the world will be multiplied. Open our eyes that we may see the needs the pain and the fear around us, and open our hearts that we might take your love to those who need it most. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for prisoners and for those who work in prisons, especially for chaplains and volunteers who bring your word of love and grace to the incarcerated. After long weeks and months deprived of familiar contact, help us all understand the stress of being imprisoned. May those who represent the face of Christ in these environments find strength and wisdom in your companionship and offer ministry of reconciliation and renewal that you desire for everyone. We especially pray for those in our world who are imprisoned for their faith, for their pursuit of justice, and for having the courage and conviction to challenge the Caesars of our time and all systems which oppress and demean your children.
Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those we love but see no longer. We remember especially today the venerable Cyril Lads, priest and archdeacon, who served so faithfully in many places in this Diocese of Huron, and especially here at St. George's, London. Grant to Norma peace, to Debbie, Jennifer, Jane, Julie, and John, your deep and abiding peace. Comfort their hearts with the prospect and hope of our resurrection when we will be in your presence together with your servant Cyril. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you walk with us through the days of challenge and celebration. Be our bread for the journey of life to sustain us and encourage us whatever the week ahead holds for us. Amen. Amen. And now, joining our prayers and praises together, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and his love and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>